you guys, it's me, Keisha. Oh my God, Power is back on! Can you all believe that it has been a full year since Power Season 2 ended? Oh my God, I miss you all so, so, so fucking much. I have been waiting for this day for a fucking year and it is finally here. And they fucking delivered. This is my All T All Shade Power Season 3 Episode 1 recap video. So... Grab you a snack, get you something to drink, and sit back and catch this tea I'm about to give you on episode one of season three. Let's go. So we start off this episode with Angie and Ghost. Angie is so happy. She is serving us main bitch teas. This bitch is so happy to be, to be Jamie's main girl, main bitch wifey, even though she ain't got the ring, but I digress. But I'm like, Angie, bitch, you cannot go to the club dress business casual like who the fuck goes to the club in her new york and company express outfit girl i was like girl you better get you some motherfucking club dresses from bb's and show these hoes what you working with hell i look better filming this damn recap video than she did going to the damn club i mean come on angie girl get it together so they're inside the club and they're overlooking everything like they fucking Jesus and Mary. And Angie is telling him how much faith she has in him and her knee length dress. They start kissing and shit. And all I could think of is I bet his bottom lipstick. <laughs> Ghost like, all right, bitch, I gotta go. I gotta go take care of my club. I'm like, this is your life, Angie, bitch. This is what you want. You're gonna be forever left alone, just like Tasha ass was. So she says to him, go make me some money. And I'm like, bitch. And Ghost is looking at her like, bitch, okay, Tasha 2.0, have several, bitch. Once he's gone, she turns around and opens her little clutch purse and she reveals that she has a gun because, you know, Greg is stalking her. So Tommy is getting dressed to go murk Ghost. <laughs> this is the best dress killer I've ever seen in my life. Tommy always slays us with the fucking fashion. That white boy can fucking get it. So Holly long neck ass is trying to go with him. I'm like, girl... Go get shot in the chest again. I'm sick of you already. He tells her dumb ass, you cannot go with me because in case anything happens and I get knocked, I don't need you knowing shit. And plus, who gonna bring the bail money if you whip my ass? A uh, duh. So his phone rings and it's Julio foreign ass. And Holly is ear hustling as usual, trying to be his motherfucking vice president of the Coke organization and shit. And he tell her, bitch, mind your fucking business and feed the fucking dogs and get out my goddamn conversation, hoe. So Tommy meets up with Julio, old sex yes, and they meet up with the terror squad, some old Puerto Rican ass niggas. <laughs> so the terror squad gets arguing with Tommy over Ruiz's old territory because they want it now since Ruiz is gone. They trying to take it from the Salado brothers or some shit like that. So Tommy like, chill, we can work this out, but dude ain't trying to hear him. He on some, I'm going to cut a bitch if you keep on talking to me because I don't know who the fuck you are. He basically tells Tommy, you better back the fuck up before you get shot the fuck up. And you know, Tommy does not take well to threats. So Tommy is like, look, motherfucker, do not make me kill you. This was not on my schedule for today. Tommy is in full whoop a bitch ass and goes into Hulk mode. And then everybody started fighting the shit. And their fight just reminded me of like West Side Story. It was so gay. <laughs> I just didn't like the choreography at all. It kind of was cheesy to me, but I digress. So then the cops come and everybody scattering shit like roaches and Tommy and some other little Puerto Rican dude, they run, they hiding and shit in the alleyway. And dude is basically on some like, if we don't get no new product, I'm gonna have to go elsewhere. Where the fuck is Ghost? So Ghost and Dre go into his office and Dre got on his new H&M Alexander Wang suit. <laughs> Ghost gives him a gun and tells him to secure the club to make sure that they don't have any more shootouts and shit up in that motherfucker. Because if one more goddamn person gets shot or die up in there, he gonna get closed down for good. He tells Dre to no longer call him Ghost, call him Jamie, and he therefore needs to go by his real name inside the club. Outside the club, he can be Dre all the fuck he wants to, but inside the club, he is Andre. And Dre looking at him like, okay, Mr. Rogers, what the fuck is this? So once Dre leaves the office, Ghost goes into his desk drawer and he looks at the bloody card that, you know, he was leaving on all everybody dead bodies last season. So then he goes outside the club and we see him standing outside and he looks to his left. And so guess who's across the street staring him down like he's Chris Brown and Ghost is Karuchi? It's fucking Tommy. So Ghost is looking like, what in the entire fuck is going on? And so then he gets a phone call. 
And this Angie bitch ass, she basically sends him a text message saying, where the fuck are you at, Jamie? My fucking feet are hurting. So then Ghost looks back up and looks across the street and Tommy is vanished like a fucking thief in the night. So he kind of shook because he don't know. Like, is, was that a ghost? Or was that a mirage? Like, was that a figment of my fucking imagination? He don't know what the fuck is going on. So Angie and Ghost go into his office and she says to him, Jamie, I'm sorry, but I have to go to work early tomorrow. And he like, it's cool, you know what I'm saying, as long as you was here. And so she remembers the last time she was in his office. And he's like, fuck the last time he was in my office. Remember the first time he was in my office and I had your little fine ass up against that motherfucking wall banging your motherfucking back out. Let's have a motherfucking round two of that shit. Forget the old shit. Let's get on some new shit. So he hike her little knee length church dress up and he bend down and her back is leans up against the motherfucking desk and shit and her titties is up like my titties is up and <laughs> he like, oh bitch you ain't got no motherfucking drawers on bitch. I know your pussy sweaty right about now but I'm still about to put my face in it. <laughs> so she was like, oops, I forgot. And so he go to like, you know, pull her dress up and hit a missionary style. And she's like, no, Jamie, I don't want it that way. And so she turn around, my nigga, and she look at him like, I'm about to throw that ass in a circle, nigga. I want you to hit it from the back. I want that black cock up in my ass from the motherfucking back, nigga. Let's do this. So he stick his little penis up in her and they get to moaning and shit. And Ghost facial expressions doing that sex scene had me weak. He was like, like it was like he was having the best fucking sexual experience of his motherfucking life that nigga was looking like he just saw jesus mary and mary magdalene i was like god damn this bitch pussy must be motherfucking platinum coated god damn it Asha is at home folding up clothes, being a good single mother that she is. <laughs> She's taking care of her kids, which ghost the fuck does not. And so Tyreek is walking past her door looking like the walking dead and shit. Like he is sad as fuck. And so she like, Tyreek, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like I got time for this shit with you, dad. I already got enough on my mind. So he's like, mom, like what happened to Sean? What did the police say? Have they told you anything? And she was like, I still haven't heard anything. As soon as I do, I'll let you know. Come give mama a hug. Come put your head on these big mama titties. So Ghost and Angie the next morning are getting dressed for work and Ghost is tired of her shitty ass little small ass apartment. He like, bitch, we gotta get the fuck up out of here. I mean, I cannot continue to turn around and bump into you every time. Angie informs him that she's gonna talk to her boss about transferring and that if she gets transferred, that means that she's gonna have less time to spend with him and he's also very busy, so that means he'll have less time to spend with her. So she tells him, you know what I'm saying, I really wanna meet your children, Jamie, but we'll swim whenever you are ready. I mean, no pressure, no pressure. And he looking in the mirror like, Okay, so this bitch is giving out clues and shit. I really don't want to eat my kids because I know Tasha going to be on some other shit. But, uh, okay, I'm going to play along with this shit. I'm going to roll with it. And I'm like, you just love drama ghosts. You love motherfucking drama ghosts. But Greg Crazy Ass is talking to Cooper, his co-worker. And he's telling him, like, I did not fucking stalk Angie. That bitch is lying. And so Cooper believes him. And so Greg tells him that, you know, she's fucking ghosts and she should be in prison. And Cooper tells him... He would have to prove that Ghost is involved with Lobos first and that the case might be closed because Lobos was stabbed in prison. So Greg was like, fuck. Cooper's like, you know, we think that the Jimenez brothers did it. And Greg was like, you sure? And he was like, look, you need to back up off this motherfucking shit. Get your mind together. Get you some motherfucking pussy and get your mind off this bullshit and get your mind off Angela. And so Greg plays along like, all right, I got you, homie. But really, he's still on the motherfucking case. So Cantos and Ghost are in his office and Cantos gives Ghost Stern's VIP guest list because you know he's trying to make up for how he was treating Ghost last season when he became the man in the motherfucking club and he was giving Ghost his motherfucking ass to kiss. Dre comes into the office and Cant so Cantos is looking at Dre like who the fuck is this nigga and where the fuck he come from with, he with his Brooks brother suit on. So Ghost tells Cantos to take Dre with him while he's working so he can show him around and Cant Cantos is looking like okay what the fuck is this all about like is this motherfucker about to take my motherfucking spot nigga is he flash he about to take my motherfucking spot so dre is in the office with ghost alone and dre basically tells ghost look nigga i ain't with all this pretty boy swag shit you want i'm trying to sell some motherfucking weight nigga i'm trying i'm trying to shoot up some motherfuckers like where the guns at let's hit some motherfucking blocks let's shoot up some motherfuckers ghost is like 
The club is our new hustle. Ghost is like, I promise to get you off the streets and give you a fat paycheck to put in the bank and not in your fucking mattress, you fucking ghetto bum. Like, get your head out the fucking gutter, you dummy. And Dre is like, with his ghetto mentality, he like, nigga, I said I wanted to look clean like you. I ain't never said I want to be clean. I want money, my nigga. Ghost is like, you want a better life for your daughter or not? You want to look over your shoulder the rest of your life? And then Dre hits him with this shit. He say, you done looking over your shoulder just like that? Like, motherfucker, you just stopped selling dope yesterday. Don't act like your ass is motherfucking Dr. Phil. Now, Angie talks to her boss, Mike, about being transferred. And he says no, because he needs her there on the Lobos case. And he tells her that Lobos has woken up. And that uh, they're doing chambers and... 20 fucking minutes or so. So goes in his office once again and he's going through the surveillance video to figure out who the fuck left him that fucking car. So as he's going through the surveillance video, he sees one of his workers by the name of Tatiana, some Bella Hadid looking bitch, is the one that left the fucking car. Everybody is in the judge's chamber room and Lobos' attorney wants the charges against Lobos dropped and that he be returned to Mexico so the federales can handle his persecution. So the judge is like, you niggas didn't protect him. He's like, you motherfuckers didn't do your job. How the fuck this nigga get shanked in fucking prison? Like, what the fuck was y'all niggas doing? So Cooper is in the judge's chamber as well. He say, look, let's go with pretending that Lobos is dead and that the Humanist brothers killed him and they proceed with the John Doe prosecution. So Mike is looking like, nigga, shut the fuck up. That ain't in my motherfucking plans, nigga. I'm trying to get this motherfucker back in Mexico so my ass won't be dead. But you know, he can't say that shit. He just served us that with his facial expression. So the judge agrees to this John Doe prosecution. So then we see Ghost walk his ass up in him and Tasha's house like, daddy's home, like, motherfuckers, I'm here. Daddy's back. And I'm like... This nigga bold in the motherfucker. He come over there with that long ass trench coat on and shit. Like, <laughs> he motherfucking shaft or some shit. I'm like, ghost, bye. And I'm so sick of Tasha ass always waiting by the door for this nigga with her forever 21 old cocaine white ass outfit on. And she like, nigga, the kids at school. Or did you not know that? Uh, What the fuck you want? You can skip your black ass the fuck on up out of here. I ain't got time this. My story's about to come on. So he tells her, I came to see you, Tasha. And he tells her that he wants to tell the kids about Angela. And she like, nigga, fuck Angela ass. How about you explain to your kids why they manny, <laughs> shine ass, has been shot and killed. Like, nigga, get your mind on pussy and think about what's going on with some real shit that's affecting your fucking kids while you sitting over there trying to play Ring Around the Rosies with this bitch. She like, motherfucker, don't act like you ain't know that shine ass was dead. Like, I knew. And so she tells him that she had to identify the body and shit and that she had to tell the kids along, which was pretty much fucked up. And so he looking like, damn, once again, I dropped the ball. And I'm like, yeah, nigga, you dropped the ball with your big bobblehead ass. So oh, he says, what you tell him? And she's like, dad, he died, nigga. What the fuck you else am I supposed to say? What the fuck are you talking about? Nigga, what? Nigga. So Tasha, like, you got something you want to tell them? I mean, what happened to your face, ghost? Who blacked your eye? How your eye feel, nigga? So he's like, I know you think I did this, but I didn't. I told you I sent him away. And she's like, you tell me a lot of things. That don't mean I'm supposed to believe everything that come out your lying ass motherfucking mouth, bitch. Ghost tells Tasha everything about Kanan killing Sean and him killing Kanan. And he tells her that Lobos is dead too and that he's out the game. And so he tries to hold her hand. I'm like, nigga, how the fuck you gonna try to hold her hand when you just told her you want your kids to be introduced to your side, bitch? Like, what planet this nigga live on? I mean, what? Okay, so she like, nigga, don't touch me. I don't know where your little nasty ass hands been. And so he tells her, you know, just call me when you ready to talk, basically, because I'm done with this conversation. So Tommy is out in the street willing and dealing and eating up everybody goddamn food, trying to let everybody know that he'll be supplying them with the coke. So he's meeting with this old fine-ass Chinese motherfucker with his hair cut like mine. And that little Chinese motherfucker could get it until I find out they ain't like niggas, but I'm like, shit, motherfucker, you ain't got to like me in order for me to get that dick. <laughs> Cooper goes to talk to Angie. He reminds her that if word gets out that Lobos is alive, whoever tried to kill him the first time will strike again. And she was like, and they'll be in fucking danger. And he's like, yeah, bitch. So basically, if you make any mistakes, I'm going to make sure to get your ass removed from this motherfucking case. So Tasha was up on Tommy. And she want to know why he's been ducking and dodging her calls because it ain't like him. And so she tells him about Sean and Kanan. 
and that she doesn't believe what Ghost has been telling her. And he like, you know what? That's your motherfucking problem, bitch. I got nothing to do with this. I got my own motherfucking problems. See you later, Tasha. And so after some coercing, he finally admits to her that Ghost is telling the truth. So Angie comes home from a long days of work and Ghost has some Chinese takeout there because you know that bitch can't cook. And <laughs> I'm like, yeah, nigga, you missed the motherfucking pork chops and mashed potatoes and greens and cornbread. The Tasha was over there feeding your ass. Now you over here eating takeout food because this bitch can't cook shit but some motherfucking hamburger helper. Did you make the right decision or nah, nigga? No, you didn't. So Ghost gets a text from Dominique about the girl Tatiana not coming to work. And so he tells Angie that he has to leave early. And she looking at him like, nigga, the club don't open at 10. It's 5 o'clock, nigga. Where the fuck you need to be? See, suspicion is already there in that bitch heart because she don't really trust this nigga. And since they don't have no trust for each other, they foundation ain't worth shit. So Greg is at the club dressed in his motherfucking Sunday's best. And he actually looked cute in this scene. Like, he actually looked like he could get it a little bit, like with one eye closed, maybe. So he asks about Dominique to Cantos. And then he asks Cantos about Tommy and Ghost. And Cantos looking at him like, motherfucker, I know you a cop. And if you want to ask him any questions, you need to ask them. Get the fuck up out my face. So Mike visits Lobos in the hospital. And as soon as he walk in, Lobos' ass is all crippled and shit in the motherfucking wheelchair. But that motherfucker got enough strength to him. Mike ass up by his leg with a little bitty mini shank and shit. Like, motherfucker, why my ass ain't on a helicopter back to motherfucking Puerto Rico, Mexico, wherever the fuck this nigga's from? And he's like, motherfucker, can you please let my leg go? Goddamn, Lobo shit. <laughs> Mike tells him that the only people that can testify testify against him in court is Ghost and Ruiz. And so Lobos wants to meet Angie to see if she's weak. He wants to kill her ass. But Mike is like, chill, bro. I got this. You just got to trust me. And we can use Angie to our benefit later on. Angie and Mike are questioning Lobos. So Lobos tells Angie, like, bitch, you are way too motherfucking pretty to be working. Like, you need to be taken care of by a boss motherfucker like me. <laughs> like... Won't you get with a real nigga and get off this motherfucking nine to five bullshit? And then he tells her that the only job you should have is keeping that beautiful mouth of yours full of cock. <laughs> I was like, yes, Lobos, read that bitch for a film. And so she says to him that she's not afraid of him. Then she swallows, which shows us a sign of weakness and that she is afraid of Lobos. So he says to her, you know, bitch, you should be afraid of me. Like, don't get it twisted, bitch. I will kill your ass. And so she asks him if he's sure that the Humanist brothers tried to kill him. He's like, yeah, they've been trying to kill me for months. Who else would want to see me dead? And so Ghost goes back to Tatiana's building He's in plain clothes this time so that the doorman won't recognize him. So he gets inside the building and he goes to her apartment and he opens the door to find blood everywhere. So Tatiana has been killed nine times out of ten by one of Lobos's men. Then we switch to Tommy at his crib and Holly comes in the house in her fuck me boots. Once again, this bitch ain't got pants on. Once again, her legs are allergic to this shit. I guess pants like make her itch and she like break out in the highs and some shit. I don't know. So she gathered all these boxes that he and Ghost had stashed around the city. And so they talking, they look gangster talking shit and she straddles him on the couch and he pull his dick out and she start riding him and she riding his dick like that's the best motherfucking hit a coke she ever had in her motherfucking life and she's like oh Tommy oh it feels so good and I'm like oh god so Lobos calls and Tommy has to take the phone call and Lobos tells him that he'll need him kill ghosts and sell product at the same time because he's running low on cash he also tells Tommy that he needs it to remain on the street that he is motherfucking dead Tasha Ghost and the twins, Tyreek and Raina, are at the kitchen table. Once again, Jasmine is missing. I guess this bitch is taking a nap. I don't know. Maybe the little girl that played Jasmine didn't want to play Jasmine no more. They ain't been able to get a replacement. I don't the fuck know, but Jasmine is still fucking missing. So Ghost and Tasha tell the kids that Shine was basically hanging around the old neighborhood and got caught up with some motherfuckers he shouldn't have been dealing with. And that's how that he got killed. And Tyreek is like, well, if these people knew him and supposed to be his friends, why would they kill him? And Tasha was like, motherfucker, niggas get killed every day for shit like this. People are jealous, but you all are safe. Just listen to what the fuck we got to tell y'all and you all will be fine. And so... Raina asks Ghost, when are you coming home? And Ghost is basically like, I don't really see that happening in the foreseeable future. And Tyreek is sitting at the table looking off 
to the side like I ain't got time for this shit I just want to go play Madden and make a bomb in my room because I'm planning on killing all you motherfuckers because y'all are pissing me the fuck off so after dinner Ghost assures Tasha that Tyreek will be okay and she's like are you sure motherfucker because you ain't here on an everyday basis I'm the one that's here how sad he is on everyday basis shut your dumb ass up and it's obvious this season that we're going to see Tyreek go through some shit he does have a bigger role and like I said something is going to happen to Tyreek this season either he's going to get killed or he's nearly going to get killed or kidnapped something's going to happen with these kids and the Turi Nodden even hinted to it in an interview over the past week when they did press for the show that Kanan will be coming after her children so Tyreek tells Tasha not to call him Ghost anymore call him Jamie and I'm like girl bye bitch so Julio got two members of the terror squad wrapped up in bubble paper. He and Julio push one of them off the building. And Tommy then shoots the motherfucker all the way up from the ledge. And so he tells the one that's still wrapped in bubble wrap to remember his face. And he takes off his motherfucking ski mask. And Julio like, what the fuck are you doing, Tommy? And so he tells one of the members of the terror squad to never fuck with the Salados again. And that if he does, he'll be motherfucking murked. So it's just the dude from Terror Squad <laughs> off the motherfucking balcony too. And Julio like, nigga, what the fuck are you doing? Why would you show him your fucking face? What is Ghost going to think when he finds out about it? And Tommy fucking losing his motherfucking mind and yokes this motherfucker up and start choking him out. And he was like, don't ever mention Ghost to me no more. Ghost is motherfucking missing. This is my motherfucking organization now, bitch. Shut up. Getting killed by Tommy. Julio goes to the club to go see, to see Ghost. And Angela is watching him and Ghost as they're talking and she's making a mental note because she sees a tattoo on his neck. So Julio and Ghost go into his office and Julio tells him what Tommy did and Ghost is like, I'm done. I ain't got shit to do with that. He's your new boss now. And Julio makes it known to Ghost that he ain't trying to work for Tommy. He came into this game to work for Ghost, not Tommy hothead crazy the fuck ass. So Ghost is like, Tommy's a new boss now. I don't know what to tell you, bitch. I need for you to go. I got a club to run. So Julio was like, well, I guess I need to go pick up that package in. And Ghost is like, what the fuck you mean you got to go pick up a package? Y'all still doing pickups for Lobos? He was like, yeah, and Tommy is going to get us all fucking killed. We need you. And so Ghost is on his Drake take care type shit. And he was like, nigga, I'm Jamie now. I'm running the club, bitch. I don't know what to tell you. Adios, amigos. So Julio leaves and Ghost sits at his desk and he realizes that Lobos is probably the fuck still alive and his ass is in fucking trouble office going through files and shit and she sees pictures of Julio and Tommy in the case files she realizes that Julio is one of Ghost former workers so she stops going through the file when she sees some dude named Daryl walk past the door, the door with some old fucked up ass haircut and so she like uh the info off the off of Greg's cell phone trace and he like uh hi bitch how you doing how you Angela bitch do you know how to speak anymore and she's like damn I'm sorry I just need your help. He's like, bitch, I'm not getting fired for you. You need to holler at HR or some shit, bitch, and handle your motherfucking scandal because I don't want no parts of this. You better handle this shit on your own if this motherfucker is stalking you like you say he is. Goes to his office to get a tie, and when he's going through his drawer, he sees one of the bloody cars, and he like, oh, shit, what the fuck, son? Like, what in the fuck is going on? So then Ghost comes into his office and he sees Dre and he asks Dre, you need some help? He was like, nah, I'm just, you know, coming to get a tie or whatever. And so he asked Dre, are you strapped? And he was like, yeah, is there something you want me to change too? And he was like, nah, keep that motherfucking gun on you because he know now they got trouble coming around the motherfucking corner. So Ghost rounds up the whole motherfucking staff and shit. He making this big old speech about loyalty and trustworthiness and that he's looking for a general manager to run all three of the clubs. So he calls Cantos up and everybody's cla clapping because they think that Cantos is about to be the new general manager. And Cantos is feeling himself and shit. He's feeling himself. He's feeling himself. He's feeling his. And so Ghost wraps his arm around Cantos' shoulders like... Cantos here is the exact opposite of what I want this club to be. This lying piece of shit is no longer welcome here. And if y'all ever see him here, call the motherfucking security on his ass. As a matter of fact, security, get his ass the fuck on up out of here. So Kanto was like, no, ghost, you need me. He's like, bitch, no, the fuck I don't. Bye, bitch. And so everybody is shook and looking around like what in the entire fuck is going on, including Dre, because he don't know what the fuck is going on. And I'm like, once again, ghost, you fucking up. Thinking you the man and shit. Thinking you know everything. Little do you know that the motherfucker has been lurking around your motherfucking club trying to dig up dirt on you. And Cantos knows this, but you didn't want to hear shit this motherfucker had to say. The 
Angie are at the dining room table eating day old Chinese food. <laughs> and so she asks him Julio, who Julio is. And he tells her, you promised to forget my past. And she was like, I promise I will try Jamie. Who is he and why did he come to the club last night? And Ghost tells her his name and that he is from the Torres crew. And she was like, and what does he do now? And he was like, I can't tell you that. But he used to work for me. And it's like, fuck, Jamie. I thought you were fucking done with this shit. And so... He tells her that he told Julio he was out of the game and that, you know, I'm trying to make you trust me, bitch. But there's only so much I can fucking do to prove myself to you. Either you're going to trust me or we need to end this shit now. Once again, he putting his dick on the table because he ain't got time to be hearing her, her bullshit. And so she tells him about Lobos and that she talked to Lobos and that he thinks that the human ass tried to kill him. And Ghost is like, oh, fuck, son. I thought I had this nigga dead. Now what the fuck am I going to do? So Tommy comes home with a pizza and he's calling Holly's name. He's like, Holly, Holly, Holly. And so he see a trail of blood and shit on the ground. He followed a trail of blood and then he goes into his kitchen. He sees his motherfucking dog on the ground dead. Somebody then broke into his motherfucking house and killed his dog. Where Holly ass at? I don't fucking know. Really don't fucking care. End of the episode, Angela and Ghost are laid up in the bed after caking, after fucking this shit. And she take a shower because, you know, she got cum in between her thighs and shit. So when she goes into the shower, he pulls out the card and then he calls Tommy and leaves Tommy a message saying, we need to talk. It's Ghost. Made official that Ghost is not the fuck dead. Ghost is well and motherfucking alive. And I was like, okay, this was a decent episode to start the season off with. It wasn't that boom pow in your face episode that I was looking for I give this episode a B minus it was good for what it was it was actually you know just getting us warmed up for the season catching us up on what happened last season and letting us know that certain people aren't dead and that trouble is around the motherfucking corner so what you thought about tonight's episode of power I have a poll going on up here what do you give tonight's episode do you give it an A B C D F let me know and I will give you the poll results on next week's episode. Thank you all so much for watching this All T All Shade Power Season 3 Episode 1 review. I hope you all enjoyed this. I cannot wait for this season. It's going to be fucking lit as a motherfucker. If you have any, thank y'all for watching this episode. I love you all so much and I will see you next week for my next Power Recap video. Love you all and have a safe week. Bye. My latest book, Radio Silence, is available right now on Kindle, Nook, and in paperback. Check it out now at Amazon or BarnesandNobles.com.